So recently in the golf instruction world, a really common topic and popular topic to talk about is shallowing the golf club and how that is done. I've heard lots of different theories and lots of different ideas. Some coaches talk about how it is the arms lowering, the trail arms straightening out. They talk about how rotation is actually a steepener. And I thought I'd go back and revisit this topic. I went through my 3D database just to see what I see the best players in the world doing. I don't see the best players in the world actually lowering their arms in the way that I hear many coaches describing it. So many have talked about how the trail arm is going to be straightening out, which is lowering the arms down. The lead arm or the trail arm is also adducting. And the lead arm is coming down and off the chest. Now my database says different. What I see in transition, so in the early part of the downswing, I actually see the trail arm adding hinge. So it's not straightening out, it's actually hinging slightly more. The lead arm I see adducting slightly more. Yet I still see the golf club shallowing out. So what's happening? Well, my answer to this is that rotation, if done correctly, is not necessarily a steepener. So those players are actually shallowing the golf club in a different way. So here we have Sergio Garcia. I just want to show you his transition and how he shallows out early. So he's finishing his backswing. And then as he transitions, you can see his lead arm is actually adducting more and more and more. And his trail arm, if we focus on it, it's actually bending slightly more and more and more. And that's due to the force that those segments are under as you're changing direction and you have a weighted golf club. So the hands are actually not coming down faster than the body's opening up, yet the club is still shallowing out. Interesting concept. And here we have Rory. He's pretty dynamic. Hitting a 7 iron, 97 miles per hour. And just pay attention to the same things. So as he's changing directions, he's kind of turning into that left arm and that thing's getting squoze. Tighter and tighter and tighter. Also at the same time, that trail arm's going from 50 degrees bent to 57 degrees bent, 58 degrees bent. So it's bending more and more in this same window as that club is beginning to shallow out. So they're all doing the same dynamic motions. Early in the transition, they're bouncing from left bend to right bend, which is shallowing things out. And it's not so much that their arms are, are lowering the club down, because they're not. His arms are not really lowering that golf club down. That lead arm is getting more and more pinched across him, pretty continuously, almost down to P5. And here we have Dustin Johnson hitting a driver, 121 miles per hour. And you can see, watch that lead arm adduction. So as he's transitioning, so the club's still working up. Now the transition's happening. See that thing pinching tighter and tighter and tighter? Yet the club's shallowing out. Now look at the elbow data. So the trail elbow's actually bending more and more and more as that club is shallowing out. So obviously the shallowing of that golf club is not happening because the arms are lowering the club down. It's happening for another reason. And that's one that's hard to measure in any 3D system thus far, and that's how the body bends. So I'm gonna demonstrate with a six foot piece of PVC pipe. So what I see these coaches talking about, they, they're showing how, let me just show with the golf club, they swing the club back and they show how rotation moves the hands out. And that's a steepener, so I've got to compensate by lowering the hands and arms. If that was how I turn, they're right. But that's not how I turn, and that's not what I see the best players doing. So 
what I see the best players doing is they're creating this nice wind up, this load, and now in transition, they're actually going bouncing from this left bin to this right bin. So you can see how this stick is not going this way, which would send my hands out. But if I go into this, bounce into this right bin, that actually doesn't send my hands out. So lastly, let's use me as an example. So this was a 100 mile per hour 7 iron. And you can see as I am approaching the transition, my lead arm really bounces into adduction. It gets pulled more against my chest because of the change of direction in my rib cage. My trail arm also bounces, so it starts to gain. It's gaining hinge for quite a while in the transition there. Yet, at the same time, that club is shallowing. So it's shallowing for a different reason than my arms lowering it down. Now, there is some supination in the trail forearm that's pitching the shaft back, but the lowering, a lot of it's due to how my body is bending. I think that's a discounted area that's hard to measure, but it's something that athletes do. We see it in baseball. We see it in pretty much every dynamic motion, even running. So the bounce in the rib cage, how we bend, go from left bend to right bend, plays a big role in how we shallow the club out. So maybe there's a third option or an alternate, or alternative, less discussed option, which is actually how we move our middle relative to our arms. So we can still be shallowing that club out and have this dynamic, rotation that doesn't kick our hands out.